Okay, so the scientist Matt Taylor and his team, they've landed a fucking probe on a comment. Whoopee fucking woo. Everybody's more interested in the shirt. And in, and in that respect, in that respect, I've got to hand the feminist contingent something who will be saying something along the lines of, well, for years now, if a woman on television says something profound or if she's done something magnificent, all that anybody ever says women are worse than men in this respect is did you see what she was wearing did you, did you see the dress she had on so i suppose matt taylor maybe that's a little bit of the same that he's getting there but let's examine i'd like to examine the shirt and to make a few comments through the through the miracle of technology allow me to furnish you with the images that are on the shirt so have a look at what's on this shirt here really it's kind of 1950s style pinup art isn't it the first thing that came to mind when i saw this shirt and these images was tony blair some of you may remember tony blair the british prime minister he had a shirt a paul smith shirt and on the on the cuff there was a picture by a guy called archie dickens who makes pinup art quite lovely pencil drawings guy in his 80s and 90s he did most of his drawings he was in his 80s and 90s. I don't when he did them in the 80s and 90s. And at the time, that made the paper that, that, that Tony Blair was wearing this Paul Smith shirt with this, with this slightly saucy, erotic image in it. Um, and that was it, really. Nobody said, this is the reason why there are no female British prime ministers. It's prime ministers wearing shirts such as this one that excludes them. Now, admittedly, we were still recovering from about three fucking terms of Margaret Thatcher at the time. So maybe that was why nobody made that argument. But it does seem as if we're getting a little bit more restrictive. We're actually kind of going backwards. These are fucking 1950s style images that we're actually finding so offensive, more offensive now than we did in the sexually repressed 1950s. It kind of makes you wonder. But something that always gets me and I often mention this with something, is that if you have to make an argument, if you have to make something seem worse than it actually is to make the argument, that should set a few alarm bells ringing. So here are a couple of uh, comments that were made by people, people that, are, that have access to better media sources than me. Uh, here was Amanda Marcotte. She calls the shirt pornographic these images are pornographic maybe she doesn't have the internet in her home if she does then she should have access to what actual pornography consists of but what is a pornographic pose she says these are pornographic poses if, if any pose that can take place in pornography is a pornographic pose, then even me sat here like this is a pornographic pose because there is pornography of people just sat there. I would suggest that a pornographic pose as opposed to an erotic pose or a sexy pose is the kind of pose that you would only see in pornography. So... If the shirt of Matt Taylor's featured a woman with her legs behind her neck and a dildo stuck out of her arsehole, then I would suggest that that would be a pornographic pose. As it is, I think that's just Amanda Marcotte's ridiculous hyperbole to say that these are pornographic poses. But it's an even worse example of hyperbole. So there you go. I've just been to the shops earlier on today, right? And apparently, apparently I went to the shops naked. I was fucking naked. God knows why nobody batted a fucking eyelid. But I was there buying a Subway this afternoon and it was very tasty, stark, naked. Because apparently that's what naked means now. It means to wear clothes. But this is the point. If you have to make out that these clad women were naked to make your point or that these erotic 1950s style pictures were pornographic to make that point maybe that should just give you a clue that you're slightly overreaching in the point that you made so what i want to do is to read out to you something that greta christina wrote on that but her thinking is so unnuanced so fucking flat on this subject she seems to think that we can only view people in one particular way and if that's the way you view people that's the only way you can view everybody at least everybody of that particular sex so what I want to do is to demonstrate just the stupidity, the absurdity of what Greta Christina wrote. I'll show you her actual words on the screen, but I want you to imagine that Matt is actually wearing an Hawaiian shirt covered with men in sporting attire, and I'll fit in the words as appropriate. 
So doing an interview about your team's big science achievement while wearing a shirt with men clad in tight-fitting rugby tops does not say sport is awesome, it says men are for sport. It says every man working on this project, every man working on a similar project, every man working in STEM, every man aspiring to work in STEM, this is what I think of you. Every boy dreaming of working in STEM sub day, this is what I'll think of you when you're grown up. Rugby and cricket. See how ridiculous our argument is? Nobody would even fathom that to begin with because we can understand that we can love sport, we can have sporting idols, we can have posters of, of sportsmen on our, and sportswomen on our walls, but that doesn't mean that we objectify men or women into just being capable of playing sports. Similarly, Matt Taylor can eroticise women. He can find the women, the pin-up style, the very tame pin-up style art on his shirt. Erotic, he can appreciate the female form, but that doesn't mean that he can't appreciate his female colleagues for their intellect and for their contributions as female colleagues any more than he appreciates his fellow, his male fellow colleague who he plays squash with on a Saturday afternoon for just what a fucking good squash player he happens to be. But the reason that Greta makes this argument and the reason that most of the commentators have made this argument is because they're making the case that the reason that women are underrepresented in STEM fields and remain underrepresented in STEM fields is largely as a result, not specifically of wearing shirts like this, but acts of casual sexism, in much the same way that the reason that men are underrepresented in the field of nursing is because of casual sexism. Well, actually, it isn't anything to do with that. But if it was women that were underrepresented in the field of nursing, then obviously that too would be due to casual sexism. Now, I'm not suggesting that casual sexism doesn't exist and doesn't have some impact on the representation of women in STEM fields or any other field where women are underrepresented. But what I've got to tell you is this. About 20 years ago, I worked in retail for about six months at a place that had about 20, 25 female staff. And at one point, only me and one other guy worked there. And some of the things that I could say that some of the women said at the time would make some of these commentators blush. Uh, it was a predominantly female environment. And because it was a predominantly female environment, they got away with things that perhaps they wouldn't have otherwise have even attempted to do, such as pinch our asses and on a couple of occasions groped my bollocks. But it was all done in good humour. Right, I don't have any malice. I'm not bothered about any of that. That's not to say that I'm saying it's an appropriate thing to carry on. But what I do want to say is that men are underrepresented in the retail trade. But the reason that men are underrepresented in the retail trade isn't because of acts of casual sexism, like men getting their bottom pinched, etc. Right? I don't know what the reason is, but it's fuck all to do with that. And I'm sure that we could talk for hours about why women are underrepresented in STEM fields and how much of it's cultural. Is there a biological component, etc., etc.? Is it the way that children are brought up? I don't really know quite where the balance lies with all these things, but one thing I'm pretty sure of is that it isn't the kind of casual sexism that is represented by Matt Taylor's shirt. No, Matt is putting the cart before the horse. Matt Taylor's shirt may be a result of most of the people working in those fields being male, but most of those people working in those fields aren't male because of things like Matt fucking Taylor's shirt, any more than most of the, all of the fighter pilots and bomber pilots in World War II weren't male because nose cones were decorated like this. Fucking hell, is it really that hard to fucking get a grip on this? You know, I can't help but wonder how would this be portrayed by these same people, these very mean-spirited people knocking Matt, if it had been a woman uh, who'd been largely responsible, had been the central figure in this, she'd been making the announcement, she'd been taking the plaudits. And I don't mean, let's not trivialise this, if she was wearing a Hawaiian shirt with eroticised men or semi-naked men, maybe just in a pair of shorts or speedos, because if that was the case, nobody would have given a fuck about that. So I'm not even going to consider that, right? 
But imagine if she herself, if a woman was making the announcement and she was uh, dressing in a slightly provocative way. She had quite a short... I, I, I don't like saying that. I feel like I'm slut-shaming her even, suggesting that, or victim-blaming her by even making these kinds of remarks. But imagine if she was showing some cleavage or, or she had quite a short skirt or something like that. What would the likes of Greta Christina say? They'd be stamping their fucking feet, banging their table and saying, she's a woman, she's every fucking right to dress like that if that is how she wants to dress and you're slut shaming her if you're saying that she shouldn't be dressing like this this is her right whatever I think about it it's her right to do it but here's the thing and this argument is pretty much a corollary from the argument that Greta Christina has made with regard to Matt Taylor that isn't she saying well if you want to be a successful woman in the scientific sphere this is how you have to dress Right? It's like a businesswoman, if a businesswoman, instead of wearing a, a very demure business suit, has a shorter skirt or has a blouse unbuttoned a little bit or it's very figure-hugging, isn't she saying something along the lines, if, if you're a woman aspiring to work in business, if you're a, a girl dreaming of working in business someday, this is how you're going to have to be. You're going to have to sexualise yourself if you want to be successful. Make no mistake about it, there are some people, there are some feminists who make that kind of argument, right? And they are against women dressing in that kind of way for those kind of reasons. I disagree with them, but at least I can see some f fucking consistency between that way of talking and arguing against how Matt Taylor addressed. But if you dispute with how Matt Taylor addressed, I don't see how you can just give women carte blanche to dress however they want, when it's often having materially the same effect. If th that is the effect that you claim Matt Taylor's shirt's gonna have, then how isn't the way they're dressing gonna have the same kind of material? material effect but look at least some good news has come out of it i give you i leave you with a comment by a hermit that wonderful humanitarian a hermit commenting on greta christina's blog who says good news looks like matt taylor may have got the message and then links to a link Rosetta mission scientist Dr. Matt Taylor cries during apology over offensive shirt. Good news, they've managed to reduce a man to tears. I wonder if a hermit would be making that fucking comment if a woman had been reduced to tears over the choice of clothing that she'd made to make a talk on a scientific announcement. I wonder. Thank you for watching. Uh, bye for now. Okay, so I know I said goodbye and ended the video, but I've just thought of this and I've just got to say this now because it just seems so obvious, so manifestly obvious, but nobody seems to have said it, which is that when I look at Matt Taylor, doesn't the fact that he has this kind of slightly alternative appearance make him actually look more accepting? Everybody's perhaps saying, oh, he should be more conservative. He should have had a, a plain lab coat on or a very starchy conservative suit. But if you're from a group that's underrepresented, I don't know, maybe I can't project myself as a woman, but I could certainly go far enough to project myself if I was a gay man and I was going into a field where I thought I might be sort of outnumbered and perhaps the conservative people in those fields might have prejudices towards me. I look at Matt Taylor, I don't picture somebody who has prejudices towards people. I have a picture of somebody who doesn't give a fuck about whether you're gay, straight, male, or female, trans, uh, or, or, or cisgendered, or whatever. I just get a picture of a guy who dresses how he wants to dress, and you just do your thing, and he'll just judge you on the science that you do, and you can be the person you want to do. Whereas if he ticked all the right boxes, and wore all the right things, and didn't offend anybody, that would all be great, and none of this would have fucking happened happened but rather than encouraging people from underrepresented groups to go into science I just kind of think that that would possibly have the other effect a negative effect I'm just wondering if anybody agrees with me on that if anybody sees Matt and sees the same thing that I see there